You know, my brothers and sisters, I want to share two stories with you from the Sahaba, your fathers. Look at their understanding of Jannah and look at our understanding of Jannah. I want you to leave this hadith with me, please. One of the companions, his name was Rabia bin Ka'b al-Aslami. And this companion was a, was a very young companion. And this companion, he belonged to the people of Ahl al-Sufa. For those of you who don't know who Ahl al-Sufa is, in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there was a section in the back that belonged to the people called Ahl al-Sufa. Ahl al-Sufa were the people that had literally no money. Today, you and I, we say, brother, you know what? Well, I'm doing it tough, man. I'm doing it hajar. But really, what you and I mean, as in I'm doing it tough, means I'm not driving an AMG. I'm driving my dad's Tiara Camry, you know? But for these people, wallahi, they were really doing it tough. Imagine you lived in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you were that poor, you didn't have enough money to buy clothes, to cover your aura. Imagine you prayed in the masjid of Rasulullah and your aura was showing. So when I tell you that these people were really doing it tough, they were really doing it tough. So this young companion, Rabia bin Ka'b al-Aslami, he was one of the servants of the Prophet of Allah. And please, I want you to imagine that you're living there. Forget about the lights. I want you to imagine you're living in Medina. You're living in the city of Rasulullah Sallallahu You're in his masjid. And you are the servant of Rasulullah. And because you believe in Iman, because you have Tawheed and you believe in Allah, you have reached such a state, you don't even have enough money to feed yourself. So this young companion, he was one of the servants of the Prophet of Allah. Now I want you to imagine you're him. Imagine you had the honor of serving the Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah, he used to come out of his house for the tahajjud prayer. And this young Sahabi, Rabia bin Ka'b al-Aslami, he used to bring the bowl of water for the Prophet of Allah so he can make wudu. So the Prophet of Allah comes out, Rabia says, this is authentic hadith, sahih hadith. Rabia says the Prophet of Allah, so he goes to prepare the bowl of water for the Prophet of Allah to make wudu. Then he comes to the Prophet of Allah and he gives him the bowl. So the Prophet of Allah looking at Rabia, seeing how poor he is, seeing his condition. You know, I assume that he felt sorry for him. So he says to him, Rabia, ask me, man. Rabia, make a wish. Who's asking? The Prophet of Allah. The one who if he raise his hands, Wallahi, Allah will allow the heavens to rain gold if he asked for it. And this young Sahabi now, imagine what an opportunity. I want you to imagine, you know, some of us, maybe because the Prophet of Allah is a far stretch. I want you to imagine Bill Gates. You went to visit Bill Gates, you know, and you're sitting in his room. You're having a good conversation with Bill Gates and you know how much money he has. So he turns around and, you know, he knows where you live. He knows your circumstances. So he says to you, brother, sister, you know what? Open checkbook. Ask me, what do you want? So this young Sahabi, Prophet of Allah is asking. He says, oh, Prophet of Allah, I want your companionship in Jannah. For you and I, we say, brother, I'm happy to just enter paradise. Look how these people thought, man. He says, a prophet of Allah, I want your suhbah. I want your friendship in Jannah. So the prophet of Allah, he asks him again, almost as if to indicate 
That Rabi'ah, I'm not talking about Akhirah. I'm talking about He. Now, what do you want? You want a wife? You want a house? You want to... Tell me, what do you want? Make a wish. So he looks at the Prophet of Allah. He says, a Prophet of Allah, that's all I want. He says, that's all I want, O Prophet of Allah. The only thing I wish for, the only thing that I desire, the only thing I want from this world is your companionship in Jannah. So the Prophet of Allah, he says, O Rabi'ah, you've asked for something massive. Rabi'ah, you need to help me. You need to assist me in your request in making a lot of sujood. Another companion, my brothers, he comes to the Prophet of Allah. And again, I want you to see the mindset. I want you to think like Sahaba thought. A man comes to the Prophet of Allah and he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, when I'm with you, I'm elated. I'm flying. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, but then when I leave you and I go back home to my family, he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I start to miss you. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I start to miss you. My heart yearns to see you. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, then I leave my family. I come back. I lay my eyes on you and our Prophet of Allah, I find peace and happiness in my heart once more. But, O Prophet of Allah, the thought came to me, soon you will die and I will die. O Prophet of Allah, you will be in paradise up there with the Prophets and I, if I entered paradise, I will be down there, yani in the lower levels. He says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, how can Jannah be Jannah if I'm not with you? For one of the very few times, the Prophet of Allah was speechless. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam comes down and says to the Prophet of Allah that tell your Ummah, tell your men, tell your followers, they will be with the ones that they love in Jannah. Anas radiallahu used to say, by Allah, there was no hadith that was more beloved to us than this hadith. For by Allah, there was no one we loved more then the Prophet of Allah, Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. This was Jannah for your companions. This was Jannah for the Sahaba. My brothers and sisters, I ask you, when you think about yourself and you think about Jannah, where do you see yourself? Are you just happy to just make it? Or are you of those very few people who want the high levels? Because my brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I have news for you. Don't think that Jannah is all the same. You know, my brothers, what pushes you to do what you do in this world? What makes you wake up every morning and go to work? What, your love for work? What makes you get up every morning and go to work? Your love for work? No. Your love for this. Because you know, right? I work because I need this and I need this so that I can get through my daily life. Yes or no? What makes you go to school in the morning? What? Your love for knowledge? No. But you know, I need to go to school to get a good education. Right? And with a good, you know, with a good education, then I can get a good job. And with a good job, it always comes back down to what? These ones. Today I'm here to tell you, why do we do what we do? Why do we fast? Why do we pray? Why do we hold these events? Why do you do what you do as a Muslim? It's also for these ones. But not here. 
there. Don't think for a second, my brothers. Jannah is the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, for those that are successful on the day of judgment, I will reward them. What is Allah going to reward you? My brother and my sister, this is now very personal now. Because Allah is talking to you. With all of these difficulties in dunya, you know, through, throughout the three days, we've been trying to encourage you to become a better Muslim, to become a better Muslimah, to become someone that's, you know, all of these things. But for why? What's the purpose? What's the payment? What is the reward? What is to happen? You know, if I become the best Muslimah who's an active da'i, who's an active this and an active that, what's the reward? Allah says, if you are successful, if you pass for you, I have prepared something. My reward to you is something no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no heart and no mind has ever imagined or contemplated. This is what I have prepared. This is what I have prepared for those believers that are successful. I have prepared for them a paradise, the likes of which no one has ever seen or heard or even imagined. This is what awaits you, my brother and my sister. Jannah, Jannat, Tajri min tahtiha al anhar. A paradise awaits you, under which rivers flow underneath your feet. You know, I don't know what the condition is here, but I know in Sydney, property is based on water. The closer you live to water, the more expensive your house is. Is it the same here? No? In Sydney, the closer you live to water, the more expensive your house is. And if you can see water from your house, it's called water views. If your home has water views, then your property automatically doubles. And if you have a waterfront, yeah, and if you live on the water, between you and the water is only sand, you, you, you have a waterfront house, then this is what they call prime real estate. Allah doesn't tell you, you live on the waterfront. Allah says underneath your feet, underneath your houses, underneath your palaces, rivers flow. This is what I have prepared for my believers. This is what I've prepared for those that pass. And let me tell you, my brothers, Wallahi, Jannah is of levels. And don't you for a minute think that those that are on the high levels are the same as those on the low levels. I'll give you an example. Ever been? Has anyone here ever been on an airplane? Just raise your hand. Have you been on an airplane? Have you been on an international flight? Yeah? MashaAllah. I want to give you this analogy. Soon, I'll be leaving Oslo and I'll be flying to Sydney. Right? And I'm taking an Emirates flight. So you and I now, we're both jumping on the same airplane. We're jumping on an Emirates flight and we're going to Sydney. Technically, both you and I are on the same airplane. But I want to ask you, is the one that is sitting in first class, can he be compared to the one that's sitting in the back? You see, when you and I travel, or at least me anyway, when I travel, I sit in the back, usually next to the toilets. Right at the back. Economy. And usually when they take you into the airplane, how do they take you in? When you come to the airport, they ask you, so are you flying business or economy? You say economy, they tell you, then line up with the sheep, inshallah. Come to the left. You look at the queue, yeah, Allah, you think, bro, this plane's gonna leave and we're gonna be still standing here. Look at the people. But those who fly business and first class, sir, ma'am, please, right this way. Right this way. You're worried, I'm two, three kilos overweight. 
he has 50 kilos over whatever he has. 50 kilos is the minimum of what he's allowed. Are they the same? Then when they take you onto the airplane, how do they take you in? They make you walk through first class and business class and tell you, sir, keep going straight down to the toilets, please. And they make you see the seats. You've seen the seats. You've seen the size of the TV screens. And you walk through and your heart burns. That for 14 hours I'm going to be smelling the toilets while this guy's reclining all the way back. But you and I can still both boast that, hey, I was on the Emirates flight with him. But can you really be compared? The food is not the same. The seats are not the same. Even the hosts are not the same. Have you noticed how they're always pretty in the front and you get to the back, you think, Ya Latif, please don't serve me, man. I don't want to. Everything changes. In dunya. What about what Allah has prepared for those who are on the high levels, man? You think they're the same? Wallahi, they're not. In Jannah, my brothers and sisters, I want you to think about paradise because this is what drives us. In paradise, my brothers and my sisters, time will no longer exist. Allah says in Jannah, in Jannah, my brother and my sister, you will live therein forever. Yani not a hundred years, not a thousand years, not ten thousand years, not a hundred. You will live therein forever. You will never, ever, ever die. Can you imagine that? You will never die. Some of the scholars, they try to give an analogy to help you understand. And they said, imagine, right? Can you imagine this hall now? Imagine we filled up this hall with sand. How many grains of sand do you reckon will be in here? Halas, it's a figure that you can't count, yeah? Surely. The scholar said, imagine we filled up the whole earth we filled that up with sand. Really, the, the, um, they actually used mustard seed, right? But yani, They said, imagine we filled up the whole earth with mustard seed from the ground all the way to the skies. And every one billion years, one bird would come to earth, take one mustard seed and go. And it won't come back for another billion years. It will come back after a billion years. Take one seed and go. The scholars say this bird will use up all of these mustard seeds. All the mustard seeds would finish and you will still be in Jannah. You will be there forever, my brother and my sister. No fear of death. In Jannah, you will never grow old. Did you know that? An old lady, she came to the Prophet of Allah and she says, Oh Prophet of Allah, is there room in Jannah for an old lady like me? He says to her, No. In Jannah, there are no old ladies. So she began to cry. So he smiled at her sallallahu alayhi wasallam with that smile that penetrates the heart. And he says to her, in Jannah, Allah will take you back to your youthful days and you will live forever in Jannah as a youth. In Jannah, my brothers and sisters, you will be the age of about 33 years old. Can you imagine you and your father are the exact same age? You and your mother will be the exact same age. And in Jannah, you will be as tall as your father, Adam. 
about 30 meters high. In Jannah, my brothers and sisters, you will never have to go to the toilet ever again. Imagine that. You never ever have to do number one or number two or number three. Some people do number three. I don't know what that one is. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, there's only one and two. In Jannah, you will never go to the toilet again. My sisters in paradise, you will never have your monthlies ever again. You will never have these emotions and everything that comes along with it, my sister, never done, finished, dusted. In Jannah, you will never get sick. In Jannah, you will never get tired. In Jannah, you will never sleep. You don't sleep in Jannah. In Jannah, my brothers, you will never get old. You will never get tired. You will never feel fatigued. It's just pure and pure and pure happiness for eternity, forever. This is the prize that Allah has prepared. In Jannah, there's no more fasting. In Jannah, there's no more Salah. In Jannah, there's no more Wudu. In Jannah, there's no more worship. Nothing. You never have to do anything ever again. In Jannah, you will be clean shaven. No more this. You see this? This won't be there in paradise. I can't wait, man. <laughs> well, I can't wait. Uh, look, really, wallahi, it's the sunnah and wallahi, I love the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wallahi, it's the sunnah and it's here. But if I had the choice, well, I'll rip it off as soon as I can. <laughs> you know, I'm an electrician by trade. So as an electrician, I use the cordless drill a lot. And sometimes I'll be doing a delicate job and, and I have to sort of focus and get close. So many times, you know, I'll be focusing, getting close as I'm using the drill and, and my beard gets caught in the drill. Right? In Jannah, no more. And in Jannah, my brothers and sisters, imagine, maybe the boys, they won't appreciate this as much, but the sisters. In Jannah, the Prophet of Allah, he tells us that you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to be the most amazing creation that ever walked the earth. Wallahi, in this dunya, grab the most beautiful woman on the face of the planet. The most breathtaking woman. And tell her, look, if you can change a couple of features within yourself, what would you change? Wallahi, she'll give you a whole list of things. But in Jannah, my brothers and my sisters, you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to go, God damn, man. <laughs> Who is that, man? <laughs> Woo! Hey! <laughs> Perfect in every way. Sisters are really struggling. What does he mean? You won't change anything. Perfect in every way. This is Jannah. And in Jannah, nothing will ever get old with you. You see, in dunya, everything gets old. In dunya, everything is beautiful to begin with, but then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And I'll give you an example. Maybe the younger guys, they're not going to know what I'm on about, but maybe those that are a little bit older will catch on. Do you guys remember when the Atari came out? Does anyone know what the Atari is? Sega? Nintendo? The young guys are thinking, who's this dinosaur, man? What are you going to <laughs> Does anyone remember the Nintendo? You remember the first one? You know, the, whack, whack. you know the one that duck hunt? Yeah? When that thing came out, I was a very young, young, young. 
When that thing came out, Ya Allah, that was the peak of happiness. That was it. If you had that, that's Jannah on earth. There isn't any more purpose to life than Nintendo. So when we were young, I couldn't afford it. And it was expensive, you know, my mom and dad were doing it, you know. So I would beg, mom, dad, you don't understand. Wallahi, this is it. This is the peak of happiness. This is the reason. This is the purpose of my existence. The Nintendo, man, you got to get me the Nintendo. Anyway, so because it took them so long to save up the money and buy it for me. Eventually, when they did buy it, Allahu Akbar, the joy and the happiness in my heart, man. You know how long the joy lasted for? Until the Super Nintendo came out. And because it took them so long to buy it, it, there was a very small gap between the Nintendo and the Super. Wallahi, and what was the purpose of my happiness became the purpose of my misery and destruction. Come on, man. I can't play Dakan while the brothers are playing Mario Kart. Come on, man. Wallahi, and I spent my life like this. Eventually, when my mom bought me the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64 came out. When the Nintendo 64, and this is dunya, man. You're never, ever, ever happy. Do you remember when you bought your first car? Anyone here remember their first car? Let I drive my first, it was the biggest piece of crap that ever walked the earth. But I drove that thing like it was a Lamborghini Gallardo, yeah? <laughs> Lay back, <laughs> pumping the music, the parcel tray is falling out, the, the, yeah? And honestly, I used to drive past the girls thinking, yeah, I know you want to be in here. I know. I know. All right? Just drive that thing, yeah? Do you remember? Do you remember the joy? Do you, honestly, do you remember the happiness that came to your heart with your first car? Now you wouldn't be caught dead in it. And from that day to now, you've been changing and upgrading your car. Have you found happiness yet? You remember your first phone? Yeah? Wallahi, you've been upgrading your phone for how long? Now they tell you what? what what's this? Do you still remember when the iPhone came out, then the iPhone 3, then the iPhone 4, then the iPhone 4S? Wallahi, I was convinced that iPhone 4S stands for iPhone 4 stupid, that whoever bought it was really that pathetic. It was the exact same phone with the exact... But the fact that there was an iPhone 4S, there was misery in your heart until you got that. But in Jannah, it's the opposite, man. In Jannah, the Prophet of Allah, he tells us that you'll pick up a fruit. You don't even pick it. You see a fruit in paradise and you just have to wish it. You just have to desire it and that fruit will come to you. Then you take a bite. Prophet of Allah tells us it will be the most amazing thing you ever tasted in your life. Then the next bite from the same fruit will be better than the first. And for eternity in Jannah, you will never ever taste that first bite ever again. It will only get better and better and better for eternity. When you see your wife, sorry sisters, man, but I got to tell the brothers the truth, you know. When you see your wife in Jannah for the first time, it is said you will be lost in awe for 40 years. So you're going to go, what? For 40 years. Then when you look away, and look at her again, she's gonna be more beautiful than when you first looked at her. And today, the most beautiful girl in this world, you look at her for four minutes, you say, bro, is her line, is her nose out of line? <laughs> yeah? Over there, it only gets better. Over there, she only gets better. And your wife, so your wife of Dunya, if she's there with you, you know, people ask me, bro, is my wife going to be there in Jannah? 
I'm thinking, cuz really, do you really want her there, bro? Isn't it enough? You had her here, you want her there as well. But if she's there with you, the Prophet of Allah tells us that your wife's beauty compared to the beauty of Hur al Ain is like the light of a candle compared to the light of the sun. Uncomparable. All this Allah has prepared for you. Houses. Not houses. The Prophet of Allah, he tells us your tent. Do you, do you guys have tents? Do you know what a tent is? Yeah, khayma. Your, your, your tent, you know, when you go camping. The Prophet of Allah tells us your tent in Jannah. Not your house. Your tent in Jannah will be carved out of one single pearl. The height of which is 60 miles high and 60 miles wide. This is your tent. Your palaces in Jannah, their bricks will be made of gold and silver. The mortar that brings the bricks together will be made of musk. All this is for you in Jannah. All this is for those who are holding on, for those who are patient for that little bit in this world. All this Allah has prepared as a reward for you. But you know what's the most amazing thing in paradise? Is in Jannah, Allah will collect us all together, inshaAllah, in Jannah. And Allah will speak to us. Imagine. Authentic hadith. I want you to really, honestly, my brothers, I really want you to imagine this. All jokes aside now. In Jannah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He will gather us all and He will speak to us. And Allah will say to you, my brother and my sister, is there anything more that you want? Is there anything I can do for you? Imagine Allah speaking to you like this. Imagine Allah says to you, is there anything more that I can do for you? So we will say, oh Allah, you saved us from hellfire. You entered us into the paradise. You have allowed us to live forever and ever in your Jannah. You have given us all of these luxuries. Oh Allah, what more could we possibly ask for? So Allah will say, so are you content? We will say, oh Allah, we are so content. There is nothing more we can possibly ask for. Allah will say, then if that is the case, as of this day forward, I promise you, that from this day forward, I will never, ever be displeased with you ever again. Imagine this, my brothers. Imagine this, Allah Azza wa Jal will never be displeased with you ever again. You think that's enough? Wallahi, it's not. Prophet of Allah, he tells us in the authentic hadith. He says, Allah Azza wa will gather us once more. And he will say, O oh my servants, are you happy? Are you pleased? Are you content? And we will say, O oh Allah, what more could we possibly ask for? Our oh Allah, you've given us everything that we've desired. Our oh Allah, you've entered us into the paradise. You've given us all that which we desired. And our oh Allah, you've promised us that you will never be displeased with us ever again. Our oh Allah, what more could we possibly ever ask for? So Allah will say to you and I, my brothers and sisters, Allah will say, as of this moment, I will remove the veil and you will see me with your very eyes.
Imagine seeing Allah. So the Sahaba asked, they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, will we really see Allah with our eyes? So the Prophet of Allah, he says, he points to the full moon. He says to them, do you see the full moon? They said, yes. He said, you will see Allah like you see the full moon with no difficulties whatsoever. This is the ultimate gift in Jannah, my brothers and sisters. This 50, 60 years that we're going to live here, Wallahi, it's nothing. For those of you who work hard, for those of you who hang on to their deen, know that this is what Allah has promised you. This is what Allah has promised the believers. Imagine seeing Allah with your own eyes. Imagine being in that environment where you, 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 everything your heart ever desires. But my brothers and sisters, wallahi, if that is what you desire, then you have to work for it, man. Like how every one of us, he knows that if he wants to drive a Ferrari in this world, then he has to work hard. And if you want to live in a nice mansion, then you have to work doubly hard. If you're expecting that reward from Allah, know that you have to pay the ultimate price. And this is what it's all about. Sometimes people tell me, you know, I don't have that stamina to move forward. Never forget why you do what you do. When things get tough, remember that I want to see Allah. When things get tough, remember that I want to be of those who live in Jannah for eternity.